Greetings programs, welcome back to Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Lily's Path. We're on to episode 2 today, so without further ado, let's get going. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I'd forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. I... This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed, it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one. A natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday, Misha's constant laughter, and Shizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here? And what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decide to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. Again. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. <laughs> she crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so the top is per perfect and evenly flat. Obviously annoyed, she's away. Sorry, sorry, Shi-Chan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm. That's a good question, He-Chan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha doesn't prove me or please don't prove me right. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred in at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, he chan Truth is, it's a local event, and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words at me with a disproportionate amount of pride too loud. I can see Ted's turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Human beings evolve with each new generation. Their ideals and beliefs behind a festival inevitably change with time. Now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. The teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. 
finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp that quickly quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem to be embarrassed at all, though, brushing it off without a care. We are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Shichen. What? That's right. Shichen, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? Uh oh, Shizune's got that look on her face. It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long, dark hair get up from her desk and silently slip towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher, who is also looking at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? He chan Something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me after looking at me looking at the girl who left? No, nothing. Okay. Well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Not really. You want to have lunch together then? Sure. Yay! Okay, he chan perfect. The rest of class passes uneventfully. The girl with long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks a little, or more than a little annoyed that we only barely managed to finish all the work in time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. <clears throat> Yes, it is, He-Chan. Impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but anything anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be, sure it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at here. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really, Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing. It'll take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me as if I'm surprised, or as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Peace out. Are you sure, He Chan? Very sure. You're wrong, He Chan! Because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. Shizune pushes her glasses up the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. I'd almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. There we go. Where do you want to eat? Cafeteria? That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Well, I guess. At my old school, I liked to eat outside, near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it near the, until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there's a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in classrooms or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had box lunches. 
After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So, Heechin, you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right, Shichin. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha straightens her posture as if she's about to deliver a speech. He chan do you have anything you're really interested in? Well, I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm, there is a book club, right, Chi chan Right. But it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, He chan It's a really popular club. I can imagine. Ah, okay. But more to the point, He chan does this mean that you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Good! Great! That's great, He chan Really great! Again, I'm not reading the laughter. I'm also giving Hisao kind of a monotone voice because, well, I figure he's one of those somber types. Why is it so great? No reason. Well, he chan other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council! I see. I didn't know this school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion, in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. Hmm? Oh, right, right. Kichit, maybe you should join the student council! They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we could hang out every day, Hee-Chan. Shi-Chan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Shi-Chan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. As if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try to get you to... So you're admitting that. No, we admit nothing. I mean, Hee-Chan, of course, it would be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. But even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one's school. Yep, it's true, Hee-Chan. Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, Hee-Chan? Can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying very hard to look their cutest, although they already are pretty cute to begin with. Kiso. Well. So it's settled then. Welcome to the student council, He Chan. What? No. No. Aw. See, 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 see. See, Shi Chan? Of course it wouldn't go so easily. Yep, that's right, though. It would be boring if something went that smoothly. Oh well. Shi Chan owes me candy now. You were betting on it? Hey, my life's not a game here. Shizune seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. That's interesting, He Chan. Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, He-Chan? If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Yep. Yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up, and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So, I will have to decline. Hee-Chan, I'm very offended. Are you saying that you don't trust us, and that we would pull something so... D disingenuous? That makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. <laughs> 
In order to atone for her uh, uh, atone. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No. How about a game of paper football instead of rich man poor man? Paper football. Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, he chan. No, it's not. That would be Mortal Kombat. Anyway. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, Shi chan <laughs> That means it's a game that really separates the boys from men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means that you're probably surprisingly good at it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, Yi chan Shizune frowns at Misha, prob telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. Whoops. Wrong button. I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Okay, Heechan. How about Risk, the game of world domination? I don't know what that is. It's really fun, Heechan. You fight for control of the world with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after school. Ah, uh, really, Shi chan We could just play for fun, Hee chan Shi chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room then, Hee chan Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. Whoop, hang on. Sorry about that. <clears throat> During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I also don't want to be nosy. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I've been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. What's wrong, Hee-Chan? That's right. We're just gonna go play a game of Risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still. For some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is, e is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? That makes you guys being on so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, Hee chan Shi chan says when their life is threatened, people have, to, have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened? Her expression unchanging, Misha, Misha signs something amusingly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that! I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's very plain, sparsely de decorated room. Although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. 
There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side, as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and the chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves all stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most noticeable thing is that, that this room doesn't have is other people. Are we early? No. What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Yeah, that's right. Before I can manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. Hichen, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised it, and you, you have to. Okay, okay, okay. You want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we set everything up. While Misha's talking, Shizune takes out what looks to be like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares that the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to when I agreed to this. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Hee-chan! Shi-chan wants you to know that you're taking too long to make a move. Shi-chan also says that she'll let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. Shi-chan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. You're so competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in turn resigns, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Ah, wait, please slow down, He-chan. Or She-chan. Um, He-chan. She-chan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Uh, okay. Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Okay, do not attack aggressively. Play de play defense. It's likely that she's trying to just psych me out. Looking at the board again, I have a pretty good defense set up, and I'm not going to wreck it by doing something reckless. A few turns later, I lose the game anyway. Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a, fi pump a fist in the air in celebration. He-chan, you lost when you allowed me to take North America. I mean She-chan, not me. Getting control of North America is ambitious because it provides a five-army bonus, but you can attack it from three fronts, so you must defend them all. I thought you'd have more guts. How disappointing. Ambition, He-Chan. Your play needs to be more daring. Ambition, ambition! I was really excited when you took South America, but then you switched to playing defensively just because you gained a small advantage. That's no good, He-Chan. You didn't take enough risks, and when you did, you didn't follow through. That's terrible, He-Chan. Damn. What's it to her if I played too carefully? There's no need to rub it in my face. Ugh. 
I wonder if you'd even be any good for the student council. What's this, reverse psychology? Well, I guess I don't have to worry about joining or not in that case. Giving up just like that? I expected more of you. Seriously, is Shizune trying to taunt me into joining the council? That ain't gonna work. Besides, I don't even want to join. It's only my second day. I can't make that kind of commitment. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. And these two, they're a little weird. Fine, I'll consider joining the council, but I want to take a look at the clubs before I decide. Really, Hee-Chan? You're not just saying that to make us feel better? Yeah, yeah. I'm just not sure that I want to. Aw. Okay, Hee-Chan, but we're not going to give up so easily. You said maybe. There's still a chance you'll come around. Ow. Come on, we could really have fun. We could play more Risk, and maybe one day you could beat me. Unless we graduate before that. That doesn't make me feel any less reluctant about joining, you know. Now again. <clears throat> Surely you're not that horrible at board games. Maybe we could play a game you know then to give you a handicap. I might have said that just to make you feel better after all. Aw, that's cold, Jan. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Chi-Chan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. You want us to show you where it is? No, thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye! One flight of stairs up and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the ladder and choose my direction at random. After I turn the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. Oh boy, oh boy. It's not open either, though. Just barely ajar so that I can not I can see it's open and nothing else. <clears throat> It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions, no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider of this school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it was much easier to open than I anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly snatched away. There she is, folks. This is not what I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway, staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. 
Uh, hi. Sorry for intruding, I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite of her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means that she must be at least partially blind, like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. <clears throat> I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student, Tiyamaku? Ah, uh, yeah. I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of my action. I'm Lily Sato. Pleased to meet you. Hisa. Hisa Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to, to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offering of prepared of the offerer preparing a drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and me, I mean some classmates, told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it's being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right. In the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting the teaspoon down and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. Yay, the first in instance of this scene. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I, sh eh. I guess I should try to ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's uh, catering to me. So which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third-year classes. <clears throat> Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Ah, I mean, uh, sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem the least bit put off by it. 
My, my. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Ah, uh, sure. Sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave me enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class rep, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. <clears throat> While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunchtime, the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it's encouraged. Ah, good. That's a relief. I've really let my guard down around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it, as Lily does the same. As I look over the, to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. <sighs> Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh, the time's gone quickly. Sorry. Right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, Yiso. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly move to allay her concern. Ah, no. It's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had a chance, but Lily seems to know in any case. True. It's open till 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. <clears throat> hmm. I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. It won't be the last time. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it. Shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it alright. Unless well, my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's alright. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped into the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we walk through the, or slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm-looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than in either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. 
It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old-world air. There don't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or down the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to the thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Doop. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Oh! The Origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual when she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing. I, I just hit my head. See, I, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped. And while I was looking for both of them, then you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. <laughs> yes, the worst things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look, she seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, Lily, did you get my message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived. Right, right, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can sh so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hisao, right. Hisao. Pleased to meet you, too. Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget me. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent, innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I... Please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she'd rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. <laughs> She'd rather commit Sudoku than try to help Isao. But, so there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to, well, not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library's adequately endowed. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organize and shelve all of them. It's so troublesome and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. Dot, dot, muffin dot. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of a little too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very me well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. 
My first impression was right. The library is basically huge. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I studied the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, ta taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. A library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily and snuck in here with us. Unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, <clears throat> I discover a nice quiet corner in the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk either reading or sleep, stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of several beanbags. It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of a classroom earlier. Hi, Anako! She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, while making, which makes her look like she's really into it. <clears throat> from the way she was acting today, I had her peg more of as a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue sl floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anything else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts, looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third of it if not half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second I'm shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands, before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and I remember what I walked up to her for. Okay, I'm pretty sure... Hmm, hang on. Da -da -da. I need to apologize. Yeah, okay. Are you sure I need to apologize? Really? Okay. It says apologize, I'll apologize. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It, it It's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look okay, but I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but she finally nods. Just a little. Okay. I take the seat next to her and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. So, er, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I know. We are in the same, same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was very wrong. This is Hanako. I'm Hanako. Hi, Hanako. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name, just to have something to say, but really it's the only thing I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and... Here I am, being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt you, Reed. Uh, I'll just check these books, if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the book I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. 
My eyes still wander to her direction, and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to immerse herself in the life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. Poor Hanako. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... 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 I gotta go do something! Meow. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she's nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see, er, notice a girl run past here? Um, maybe. What did she look like? Long, dark hair, kind of shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Yuko, would you excuse me? I'd better try and find her. Sh sure. I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. Where you go. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing. I was just looking for some books and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing that I could think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think. And she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit... strange? I wonder. It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casually only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes, blushes heavily. What? Did that sound stupid? No, no. It sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. Again, for no reason. People who have papers on their desks really like doing that. Did you find any books? I'm, I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing. But I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh, yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because... I'll just go get them. I fetch my stack of books from beside the beanbags where Hanako and I were sitting and return to the counter. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? I surprise myself with that too, honestly. At least, when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library books with one arm, I trawl my pocket for the key to my door. A sudden sound from behind startled me and made me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? 
I turn around to see who is talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know what anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before. Yesterday. I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before. You live across the hall with Kenji. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn, this could only be one of two things. Either we have met and you're telling the truth, and I just can't remember it, or you're a spy. He pauses. A psychic spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room, although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face damningly. Unlike you! Stop that, man! We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies. If you think you could pass this heese out because I'm legally blind, you're sorely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, the resemblance is real, real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? <clears throat> I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there. Kenji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh, wait. I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good, I think. Something wrong? I don't know. I just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually, even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. No kidding. You see, this is how it is, this world. There's no justice. You see, even when I lose, I win, because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? Uh, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too. She actually ran away from me was my fault, really, I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and a really beautiful hair, but the face... I guess it could go either way. Hisao, you're a bastard. She was a cutie. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here, a strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark, but a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad. But that's a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream. But no! What I'm about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't think I know, or I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I am not ready. 
I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground, the site of a feminist infiltration. This disparity in the numbers of men to women is a clear sign of how far they've come. In case this Cold War turns hot, they will have a superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the buildup of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They're so cunning, as expected of women. Soon, the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. That's why you can't trust them. They'll string you along and they kill you, just as they killed me. You'll end up just like me. Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? Hey, you said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So? You're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Or was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop it. Stop! I lost you way back there somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow? It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay. Graphs are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking, moving his hands in animated ways and continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. This Harry Potter looking fool is crazy. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That's my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. That would invalidate the whole last part, and that part's kind of important. There can only be one. Like in that foreign movie where there could only be one, and in the end there's only one dude left because that was the point. He's talking about Highlander, in case you didn't know. I've never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here I can get my graphs. I also have a list of other dark and complex conspiracies that this school holds. As tangled as... Quick, finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to go to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to them. Denial is a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked through it right like a ghost. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are so cool and comforting against my cheeks, and it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. The school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think that fitting in in a place that's made for people who are unfit to fit in anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off, and the words are left echoing off the empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place is really more of a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. Phew! That was a marathon, wasn't it, folks?
Okie dokie. Well, like I said, that was quite the marathon, wasn't it? So, that's all for episode two of Let's Play Katawa Shoujo Lily's Path. Join me next time when, hopefully, we actually get settled on Lily's Path. Probably not. That'll probably be episode four or five. Anyway, like I said, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. I'm your host, Neil Mega Man, signing off. End of line.